being born somewhere doesn't necessarily mean you're from there. But a lot of people always ask where you're born, but when you're born, you're just spending the first year of your life staring at the ceiling. Anyway. So it's not necessarily the most influential place to live, to, to form your identity. And then people ask what your favorite place is, which is also a hard question, because you have experiences in in and demand to know my entire history in ways that were not necessarily very polite, you know, very personal questions. Where are you from? Where were you born? Where did you go to school? Where do your parents live? You know, uh, and they would, de you couldn't just give them a short answer, but you had to answer. When I first opened, every day I had to have that conversation 25 times. It was painful. People would call on the phone and demand the answers. But in all small towns, you're never a local unless you're born there. And in some small towns, unless your grandparents were born there. I lived in an island in Alaska, on an island in Alaska that I loved. And, you know, it was the, it was the same thing. You know, the Norwegians that founded the island, and the same families that founded the island still kind of controlled the businesses, what businesses opened. And, who got permits, you know, they could control if your family went from one level of the economic chain to move up or down, you know, it's, small towns are, you know, they'll decide who sells you land and who doesn't, all that kind of stuff. And I think it's the same around the world, at least I've lived in small towns in different countries. Which is not to say people aren't nice or helpful. I, I like small towns much better than big cities. You know, but I, I mean, I like big cities. I loved London. I don't know. I liked, I liked Alaska a lot. Uh, I like Colorado. Um, I was only in London for a couple of years, but I liked it there. So, you know, one thing that I thought was interesting when I've, I've never owned a little country store before. So when people come out here, no matter what day of the week it is, it's a Sunday drive. It's a leisurely drive if they're out here. You know, there's not a lot of people in a hurry that pass through towns like this. So when they come in here, they want to talk. They want to talk about the building or sometimes even their own story. Whereas if you were at a convenience store in San Antonio, people get irritated if somebody in line is too slow or they're buying lottery tickets or whatever. Whereas in here, the, you know, the average customer interaction might be 10 minutes. Sometimes it's an hour. You know, sometimes it drives you crazy. You know, somebody might literally spend an hour and a half telling you about their dog and how cute it is, which is a story that's only that interesting to the person telling it, but, you know, you smile. I had a guy come by, you know those pink flamingos that you put in front of trailers and stuff? I had an old vintage travel trailer out there, and I had two pink flamingos, and this cowboy came in. 
He didn't come in to buy anything. He came in because he drove by and he saw the two pink flamingos. And, it, and I said, can I help you? And he said, I, he goes, I come in because those, I saw the flamingos. And he goes, I think they look kind of gay. And I said, you stopped in to tell me that the flamingos look gay? And he said, yeah, I've been meaning to tell you those look gay. Which, first of all, if the guy's that insecure in his manhood, that driving by a piece of plastic is somehow going to uh, affect him in some way, it's just a piece of plastic. Uh, so I I messed with him, and he, I, I said, well, I ordered them from Amazon, and it didn't say if they were gay or not. It just said that they were uh, regular pink flamingos. Maybe I bought the gay ones by mistake. And he looked at me like I was stupid, but he didn't realize I was making fun of him. And I said, well, I'll have to go back and check. I, thanks for bringing that to my attention. You know, they should probably let you know. I go, but I checked them when I was putting them in the ground, and they didn't have any genitals or anything. So I don't, I don't know if they were male or female flamingos. I mean, they could be lesbian flamingos. I don't know. And uh, he just kind of looked at me like he wasn't sure if I was making fun of him or if he, I think he thought I was stupid and so he left but the, the fact that somebody would interrupt their day because a piece of plastic bothered him not much is pretty funny. So I worked at a wilderness survival program and we did really primitive leather stuff and so I'd sit around a campfire and make bags out of deer hide. Um, they call them hospitals bags, which is a style that's been around since you know, natives, Americans, early trappers, everybody, and people would want to buy them. So I kind of started making some of these other bags that are a little bit more refined, but they're still kind of rustic. And I just stitch them by hand. I've sold, I don't know, hundreds of them, but I could afford a sewing machine, but it's, I like doing it by hand. And using really thin leather and thick thread and I go through them the corners about eight times double stitch it and they make sewing machines that I can do heavy heavy thread with but for some reason I just like doing it by hand I'm sure I can make a bag just as sturdy much more quickly but I just want to make it things that, that last So, and I sell quite a few of them, and I've shipped them around the world, and uh, I enjoy making them. I always tell people they're warranted for my life, because that's the best I can do. But I get the leather from Brazil, and that sounds exotic, but it's really just because I like that particular leather. I like the thickness. There's thousands of ways, probably, to tan leather. And I just like the way that leather is treated, that it's tanned all the way through, that it's a certain thickness. Um, but it's weird, I keep making like the same sort of design, but I just keep tweaking these small little tiny things. It's almost like until that one bag is absolutely perfect, then I can move on to something else.
My name is Brett Kelly, and I'm the owner of the Sisterdale General Store in Sisterdale, Texas, population of 